everybody Jerome Wright here once again and um again you're joining me here on my Jerome Wright YouTube channel here on YouTube and um in this video I'm going to be um discussing a little bit about um the Egyptian um yeah the um the glyphs regarding Nefertiti and Anunnaki and their babies and also Angkor Wat there's a building there at Angkor Wat and these are regarding um, mirrored images. This is my mail inbox here that you're actually looking at. In fact, let me cover recipients, names of recipients up over here when I'm thinking about it, just in case I actually catch that by mistake. So let me cover that over. Um, yeah, so what's what's happening here is that, um, okay, that should be good. Um, what's happening here is and these are mirrored images and in the mirrored images um, they create images like multi it's a, like a multi-dimensional um, holographic image that are created and I like to call it like a holographic time machine because these images produce other images and it shows you everything that existed previously and in a sense futuristically and these holographic images are dimensional and they go both ways and it's my position that these images um, when they are one image laid over another or folded over another like a book um, what happens is that it creates the scenarios to show you everything that these people were trying to suggest and what they did on those locations um, and, I'm, and I'm telling you that it all goes back to um, our ancestors whom you know nothing meant more to them than who they genetically were and how they could genetically evolved from that of what they currently were and this is what is going on today behind the scenes and this is why I'm telling you like what ancient rooted royalty and ancient rooted um, religion that the same thing is actually happening today because the evidence is right here with what our ancient ancestors were doing and a lot of these locations here you have to realize that they went on they actually they explored explorations went on and they were um, I'm gonna bring up the Anakin babies and um, these explorations there you go these explorations were actually done on these locations because they knew what they were looking for you know what I mean they had heads up and you have to talk about these exploration goes back to I mean God knows when I mean they said like to say that Christopher Columbus was the first but there's evidence of others being there before that um, the suggestion of the 15 um, I think it's 15 17 period rice maps would show glaciers that were not there but should be there and I'm, I'm, I'm complete maps all of these different scenarios but yet you know the best people that are in position to tell us and enlighten us on the truth they have failed to do so thus far um, I mean an ancient rooted religion and ancient rooted royalty look at the informations that are were at the disposal of these people through not just through inquis um, inquisitions but just through the explorations that they commissioned um, artwork that they were exposed to glyphs that they were exposed to and you know and in the wake of all of these explorations that were commissioned by um, ancient rooted royalty and ancient rooted religion there was defacing and and desecration of these locations that they visited so they took all of the information the gold um, the information the, the, the wipe these people out literally just wipe their identity off the face of the earth and then leave the rest of the world later on in time which is now guessing as to what is going on when they had the knowledge all along and this is what the problem is that I have with that but anyway I'm gonna go to this knocking babies here and as you see this here okay this here is the way that we would actually view the image like right here 
Okay, this is what if you would get if you Google the image and and there's a little subsection here that's actually well not subsection but a section that's broken out here. Okay, now this is what you'll see. Now I already have a video on this and in my video I show us that right here that in Nefertiti's throat area there's an an ape right there. Okay. I'm seeing the eye there, the cheekbone. There's the ape's mouth right there. Here's the ape's bottom chin area. Okay? And the child body, which is here, I'm showing that there's a head created in the body. There's an eye. There's a mouth. Okay? And it creates a reptile-like a reptile creature because the skin of this creature can be realized within the cloak of Nefertiti's body, the, the clothing that she's wearing. That's why this looks like that. So you have two heads. You have an ape and this reptile, and a child is shown bridged between the both of them right there. Okay, so you have two heads. The reptilian-like head here, shown in the reptilian body. That's why this side of her, um, her cloak she's wearing is that of like a reptilian. And then the ape here, and then it's showing Nefertiti. Now the child has his hand out, extend it with his hand open and right there too and well if you look in Nefertiti's ear right there there's a face of a witch-like woman whom I dub as the mother of creation and the child had his hands out to one of those snakes coming off of her head which is it's this this face is cloaked in the ear no one will never know that that was there unless I actually described it now I want to bring it in closer to show you let me bring that Okay, do we still have Nefertiti's ear there? A little, I guess I can, I can go over some here. Now, Nefertiti's ear, there's the, there's the face there. Okay, there's the chin, there's the mouth, there's the nose, there's an eye. And you see there's a snake coming off the bottom here, right there. And the child had his hands out stating that there's a bridging. Okay, and then here, again, there's another snake-like object going here, and it's shown snaking all the way up and weaving up, look, and coming around, wrapping around Nefertiti's head, and then shown coming out, and then it shows you a head of a snake here. So, there's a connection. Am I still on Nefertiti's head? There? Yeah, okay. There's a connection with all of this. And if you look in the face closely, you could actually see it. Now, the Medusa-like woman has always been in our ancient history. Yep. And this is what, this is a woman there with, with snakes all in her hair. You see that there? And this is exactly what this woman over here in Nefertiti's ear looks like. And if you Google ancient, ancient Swedish stones, all throughout our ancient history, the Medusa-like woman with snakes on her head is shown. It's a reference of this woman that is shown. This image is all everywhere globally. Now, I mean, I know what it all means, and for me to go into detail about it right here now is just not, I mean, it's not just the purpose of this video. So I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay focused on the video here because you can go off in a bunch of many directions. Because there is no end to this, people, of, as to what is happening. Now, I'm going to come over to um, um, Anakin here. And I'm going to show you how there's his head. And, you know, you're going to have to find that, that it is very strange that his mouth is up to the, um, the child's mouth. Okay? Which is a symbolization of an exchange of genetics. One would think kissing and this, that, the third. I mean, this is how these people describe... Um, genetics. I mean, we all know that the mouth, the saliva, these are all ways, I mean, of how genetics are being exchanged. But it's not just that. Because let's take this this woman here, or let's take the woman that I showed you with the snakes on her, um, right there in Nefertiti's ear over here. And let's bring her over here. Okay? Because there's her eye there. There's her nose created right there. Okay, and then here's her, her her mouth area, her chin, 
and the, and the um and the child's arm is shown going into her mouth. You see that there? So the witch-like woman's face is here. So given that there are snakes here, what is that telling you? That the child has this snake or this one of these creatures in its mouth and it's showing you a genetic bridging. Okay, because there is the woman's face right there. And for those of you who don't see, I don't know how close I am here. Let me get up on her eye again. And there's other multi, there's the eye there, the arrow. Is that the eye? The eye is created by Anakin's chin. Okay, so you have the witch-like woman there again. So, and then you can imagine with me that the snake is telling you, is Nefertiti, I mean, Anakin's snake, which is going into the child's mouth. Now, for all of y'all that re doesn't realize what this means, this is actually a reference of the penile gland, for those of you that haven't caught on yet. So, it's telling you that Anakin is rebridged back over his child through the penile gland, which re references semen. This is what this is, is, is going to, people. Okay? Now, I'm going to move away from that because this, this, this goes a little bit... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back out and we're going to go to this. Now, this image, looking at it this way, and I know that you all guys are wondering what in the world is this doing up here like this here. Um, me and my friend um, Mike has been working, who joined me. He's been watching my work for some time and he joined me and um, he came up with the idea of mirroring these images and fold them and say, hey, Jerome, I see this, I see that. How if we try this? And he um, brought some new ideas to the table. And um, I reluctantly accepted, and I'm glad that I actually did because it actually opened up my minds and new doorways and possibilities to everything that I've been seeing. So my interpretation of all of this is actually proven through the mirrored images of this. So the mirrored images for most people, if you see this, turned up on it, you would not know what it means. But for me, I, I mean, again, I mean, it just gives me two images to verify everything that I said about this in the first place, everything that I've just told you. Okay. Now, when you take these images, these images are meant to be looked at in a reverse scenario. And, or should I say, yeah, in a reverse scenario of which they are actually are. Keep in mind that our reptilian ancestors had a, 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 a multi-dimensional sense of vision and a multi-dimensional sense of awareness. So they can take these images, the images that they created, they created so that they can be looked at and viewed upon in a multi-dimensional sense. And this is the reason why you can get images out of images. And for those of them, um, them that didn't de destroy these images, um, when they did those explorations, they did themselves, uh, well, us, us, us justice and themselves injustice because it shows that they did not know truly what they were looking at or what they were dealing with when they went and, 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 um, and, um, and destroyed other things like artifacts, precious artifacts, and then this stuff here was left not to be um, messed with. All right. Now, let me show you something here about this. When this is opened up like a book, meaning you take the image and fold it back up on itself and it goes opposite up. So now you're looking at an opposite. You're taking it and going flip mode with it. So it's like looking at this now from almost like from the back side, but you're looking at the same side. So now basically all you have to do is take that image after you do that and rotate it. Another thing that can be done is that you can take these images, split them down the middle, and do the same. Split them over on themselves on either other. You can take this, split it down the middle, and then split the size, and it opens like a book. Okay? Um, or you can take this image and do it on either end. And these are how you section these images. And these, this is how you open up the dimensions to what our Egyptian ancestors was trying to tell us. Now I'm going to go back into another image that where I have this image turned 
around to where this side is facing up because this is where I want to get to get to my um, my storyline here so we're going to close that and we're going to go to the one that's turned up and there we have it now this image is turned up now to most of us we would look at this and you really don't see much of anything to be totally honest with you all right, it just looks discombobulated. For some, might look and see what they think is an eye there, and, and you know, you might say, "Okay." But we were told that that was a sun. You know what I mean? But I always knew that that was not a sun because I knew that these represented the heads of snakes, of serpents. So I always knew that. So I knew that there was no way that that could be um, um, a sun. I always knew that it represented this and for those of of us that could imagine this then you can imagine why so um, so what is here well again if you look at the image for what it is okay for what it is you can almost I'm gonna go up here to Nefertiti and I don't know if you can see here I'm gonna to try to see if I can bring this image in closer and I'm gonna to go to Nefertiti first and that before I show you some other uh, can I go down some I don't know why this is I'm um, taking me up so high it doesn't let me gradual it's not letting me go up gradually it's just taking me right right there to the largest point so let me try it here and I have actually have a several adjustments so let me go and I'm gonna go here let me see if I can put this here yeah right here in Nefertiti's chest here if you notice oh, I got I got one on either side here I'll take this side because this is my closest side rather than reaching across the screen if you notice turned up in this position here in Nefertiti's chest there you can see where I told you that that ape was you can actually see from this position like the emerging head of a dinosaur from her chest area from her bosom area you see that and behind the cloak of this reptilian skin you see the head of that creature there's his bottom chin there's his lip there's the, the distinguishing like lines in the veins and the nose right there and then there's the eye socket partially sticking out right there at the um, at the arrowhead right there. And you can actually see and witness that this is showing you a head of a dinosaur. Okay? And I mean, which is, is, is absolutely amazing when you consider the fact that these people knew who they and it's not that they were with it, what the dinosaur well not them per se them but it's telling us that they genetically knew or they knew their genetic identities and they knew that they came from the genetics of a dinosaur through the you know what i mean so they knew that we and the dinosaurs were pretty much one and the same and these people knew it and they and they referenced it in their artwork this is why you have it on the peruvian burial stones as well which I've um I made a video on and even on the Peruvian burial stones those stones are representation of dinosaur eggs and the drawings are on a a mimic of that egg it's, it's like here's an egg which represents a dinosaur this is what a dinosaur egg looks like and they made these drawings on the stones with themselves with these dinosaurs telling us that we were almost in a sense hatched from the genetics of the dinosaur egg so you have the stones 
which are a representation of what we can imagine the size the size of a dinosaur egg and then you have the drawings on the stones with these beings these Peruvian beings with their faces looking like that of the creatures that they draw so these Peruvian burials so if you google the image the dinosaurs that are on there the 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 indigenous people that drew these images and they're on there with they are looking like that of the dinosaurs and they have axes and knives representing that they were spliced sliced with the genetics of these creatures and they showing you a continuation of maintenance um, 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 process which kept causing for a genetic change and alter and that's what these records are all about now here we have multi-dimensional images there's things here that can be read that 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 um that that people have not even seen okay but i want to show you that there's more to this image than you can possibly ever imagine. Because turned up in this direction here. Alright. I'm going to leave this right here. Turned up in this direction right here. You see, because before Anakin looked like this. And this is the problem that I have because history seems to have been lost somewhere along the line because we must realize that at the point that we reached our Egyptian ancestors that there had to be an intelligent evolution period or passage where Africans had some type of intelligence that caused that came before those <clears throat> those um, those structures there in Egypt and, and the people of Egypt but you notice that it seems that Africa history has been I mean completely obliviated gone so you should have a problem with that because it all goes right straight to the um, to Egyptian now Africa is now looked upon as bush dwellers and 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 and, um, and apes, we, and they evolved right out of monkeys, right out of the jungle. When I mean, when this is not the, the case, it's just that their civilization is much older than what science would like to believe. Their intelligence is more sophisticated and more complex than what science would like to believe. So they cut it out of history. So, but these people, Egyptians, recognized that we came from, or who their ancestor was. So back then, on a closer end to that of our ape and African ancestor, these people knew that we evolved from our ape and African ancestor. And lo and behold, if you look right here, you'll see the head of an African man in full head attire. Now remind yourself that this image is flipped from one side over to the next. So it's telling you the flip side of a knocking is his African ancestor. A knocking's head headpiece creates the Nubian cloak of that African figure, which also creates almost like what, what, what I used to wear back in the day and what you would expect in Africa, a, like a daishiki, meaning a clothing that has like an African heritage to it. And these strings are shown off of it, showing you this genetic union or genetic bridge between African ancestors. Now there's something else that goes there with hand in hand with that because if you look in between here, let me let me get you in a little closer. There are the multi-dimensional faces of beings in his abdomen area that can be realized 
it just doesn't stop with and it's actually I can see multiple things that are here multiple but just a few of them I don't draw but one of them is almost seem ahead of a bull eye eye nose mouth which you can possibly see let me see if I can bring that in do we have anything here that I can bring in close let me see how close I can bring in the oh I lost it this this thing well I bring you into the guy let's leave the guy's face there how about that there you go now this guy has several faces I have my pointer here good this guy has several faces here's a whole headpiece right here and don't please people don't let the ancient alien theories take this and tell you that this is a that this is some type of um, 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 of um, space design apparatus a helmet for where they've shown that they descended down from um, from space and all of that bullshit you know what I mean these people there was there was an intelligence of life form here now I do believe that there were aliens but we are the aliens what I believe is that we are aliens of this world from our previous worlds meaning from Venus and Mercury we were doing planet hopping just like we're starting to do right now and as you see us leaving from here and going to our moon and out to Mars and then exploring other areas it's my position that this is how we arrived here through a genetic contamination process from one planet to the next as each planet was being destroyed through the evolutionary process of our plant of our planets or our previous planets which was the involvement with that and the chemistry of our those planets with the Sun where these worlds are being thawed out their balls of ice their eggs they're being thawed out and the planets are being ordered I mean being destroyed of their life are relieved of their life and their waters and their resources in the order that they are with their um, with their um, 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 uh, with their um, cycles around the Sun there's a chemistry people and if you look at it you will agree with me you know what I mean Venus and Mercury once had was once inhabited life just like we had well not just like it but it was our our ancestry of life as those planets were being destroyed what would these creatures normally and naturally and instinctively do they would find ways to get off to the next planet and this is what is happening right now and as our world is being it, it, it you, you you imagine our world at one point was a water world so therefore that tells me instinctively that if this was a water world that means that we were fish so if we were once fish to evolved onto the land as the water started being evaporated and these scenarios start, and just like you see a turtle in a pond right now where it comes out it's a water turtle and it comes up and these frogs and stuff and they come up and they bathe in the sun and eventually they become to where they evolve onto land. So we became reptiles and from that point it, it, the process just kept going but it was on a much larger scale than with much larger creatures. Because there was much larger bodies of water. So as our planet is being relieved of its water and relieved of, we are involved, we had involved to this point of where we are in a place now that we are what we are today. Point blank. It, it's no simpler than that. So, there is a history of where we came from. And this guy here is a representation before there was Anunnaki. You see that, people? You see his face? That Nubian face. Left the. Hold on, let me use my. I don't want to click out. You see the eye there? Okay. You see that eye there? You see the lines underneath the eyes, like you see a football wear, play, um, player wearing to reflect the sun, those black marks underneath the eye. You see that, people? Over top of the mouth, there's the mouth. Here's the, here's the lip underneath the chin. You see the beard right there, the goatee, the beard. You see that, people? 
and then you see this this fancy head head then there's more in here because you know what's off to either side off on either side I see the reptilian eight right here and I see one off to this side as well too you see this people there is a perfect head here's the chest cavity going up here's the neckline here here's the upper ch chest torso here's even in fact I even see like a nipple there there's a nipple there this is the open arms here and he's holding a knocking's head out stating that behold I give you Ananakan. You see that? Behold, I give you these creations. These are my creations. Behold, a Nubian God, so to speak. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Let me see. Let me bring this back down. Let me come out of this sum because I'm on, I'm on my largest. Behold, I give you a Nubian God. Egyptian from this. These people knew how to genetically alter themselves and this is what the record has always been. So this image folded over thanks to one of the images that Mike has sent me. This is shown and revealed to me. Huh. Now you have Egyptians, the best of mind in Egyptians. You have the best of minds and uh, um, um, the British have been here, the Germans have been here, the Romans have been here. You have had the best minds globally study this image on end, on this glyph. And for the first time ever you have ever seen this or even heard anything close to this. Now I have 250 plus videos here and they all are referencing back to the same thing that we were genetically altered and our ancestors had an intelligence to know what they were doing. This had nothing to do with nothing divine. This had to do with genetic contamination. A, a knowledge that is being worked on today. Now there's other images there because you cannot see it. But in these multi-dimensional images, there are other images. For example, I can see a skull right in here, right there in the mouth area. There's a skull and then there's another head down here. So you have like a total pole of faces within a face. And these are all representations of beings that contributed to the genetic contribution of this African and like and likeness being here. So he's wearing the cloak which calls for his existence and then he's telling you through his existence he calls for Anakin's existence or these Egyptian people's existence and Anakin is recognizing this being as being the cause for his existence just like from continent to continent to continent each and every building structure art that was not destroyed through these invasions and through the explorations are all stating the same exact thing how on that location which were genetic altering labs or cross-referencing places they discuss how they were genetically altered and through which genetic process and sequence it occurred and through which creatures genetically contributed the same there is something else there that I see in that God's here's the other face that I see as well as other creatures that I can see up in there and let me show you right there there's a smaller head there. Um, where we at here? Where, oh, there's a smaller head down in there. You see these beings? Look, all of this stuff can be seen when you realize and understand what it is. Multi-dimensional images 
that describe who we genetically are. And then with on all of that, there's a skull in there as well too. So multi-dimensional images in here which describe how this being contributed to creating an Anakin. And then Anakin is describing what he did to further the process. So now, huh, this is amazing. Um, I'm going to go to my next image. Here. This is Anchor Wat, and this is the Popal image. Again, through the same process that occurred with the mirroring one image over to another. This is the same process and a popal figure was um, do I have can I bring this up I'm going to see if I can bring this in it's zoom in oh it didn't zoom in I, I guess um, I guess we're, we'll keep it there and I'll zoom in with this one because I don't want to lose this and lose the video all together here alright You see the popal figure there, the mouth, the eye. You see a popal tiara like you've never seen before with wings on the top. You see that? You see this guy holding his arms out, the, this, this, this popal's cloak right here? You see all of that, people? The cloak, you know what these are held out on each side? Just like with the Egyptian one that I just showed you where that Nubian guy was holding out a knocking on either end. Well here, this is a symbolization of apes being held out. That's what this is. These, 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 these um, structures here, this stone, this stone looking structure that has symmetry of that of an ape is taken from I believe this side over here of the image of this structure however on the other side there is a more defined image of that of a monkey and if you see my other videos here you'll see what I'm talking about but when this this image was mirrored it took the chemistry from the ape from the left side of this building which is not a more defining feature of the ape but it does this is the body this is the back this is the arm this is the head and this is the um, front um, torso area along with the feet which is the ape right here and it gives both sides the same because it's a mirrored image but if we would have took the one from the other side you will see that this man, this Pope, and this tiara, this Popal-like figure, and this tiara is holding out on his cloak on both sides with his arms opened up that the image of a and said, Behold. I am bridged over with this creature and that of other creatures, which is a representation of what took place on Angkor Wat was with the reptilian, which through the body of the turtle, there was a genetic altering. And this is why you have that gross looking creature there that looks like some of our popes today in sickness. In fact, let me see if I can find um, let me see if I can find something right quick uh, let me see what we got let me see what we got let me see what we got see if I can find something to, to lend to all that I'm stating uh, okay yeah right here this is why We have images. Can I bring that up? Oh, how about if I? Oh gosh, 
Here we go with this crap. Nope. All right, we're gonna let me escape out of this because I thought that I was gonna bring that up large for you, larger than life, but we didn't get. All right, we'll keep him there. But you can see that guy right there. And I won't be able to. This is a pope here, and I don't even know. Man, he he looks crazy from this side here. I hope you got you guys are getting a good picture of all of this. But where his eyes belong at, I mean, I'm getting a ghost image on this end. I don't know what you guys are seeing there, but look at this. Again, can you see that? Can you see that face? I hope this is going to play good for you guys, and you guys are not getting the shadow that I'm getting on this end. Let me let me see what I can see. No, I can't. Okay, I can't really see because my skin, my screen on this side is giving me a reflection that is crazy as I don't know what. Can I get anything? It's not going to let me do anything over here because if I try to go up on it, it actually goes away. But anyway, I'm going to leave it just like that and I'm assuming that you get it. But you guys have seen some images of popes now where they actually look like something is horribly wrong. This guy has blackened eyes on either side and I mean he looks horrible and again people these people have dedicated their lives to something that you cannot even imagine and I'm telling you that it has a lot to do with genetic contamination of themselves with blood and semen and this is the reason why you get these faces like this it's not just with men but it's through the bisexuality of dealing with actually with the women too, which I'm telling you that nuns become involved. This is what you look like through um, 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 sacrifice of genetics. This is the end result. Now, people, keep in mind, they have the best of medical facilities, which you pay for. They have the best of technology. They're, they have everything at their disposal. Everything. They're the best of food, the best of everything. Um, there's pictures of if you Google um, um, Philip, uh, Duke Philip, I guess he's the um, 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 the Queen, the Queen Elizabeth's husband. If you Google him, he's in a car waving. He looks similar to this. Again, the best of medical facilities, the best of everything, the best of lives. Think about it, people. When you have all of this money and all of this power, what is the next thing on your mind? It is to live forever and it is to look good as possible as in you doing so as you living forever. The afterlife, the, the forelife, all of this stuff is based on a reality of selfishness and things that you could, and a call system, a mechanism that is in place that has been right up underneath your noses the whole time and you never even realized it. But look at this. Look at the face. And this is not the only face like that. This is other faces. But look at that. Tell me that that doesn't come from contaminating yourself with something. Tell me. Because I'd be damned if I'd done ate the best of foods, had the best of living, had the best of everything. That I'm going to look like that at the end of my popacy, at the end of my life here on this planet. This is bad, people. This is bad. I don't care how you how you do the math on it. Okay, now I'm going to take you back to that pope wearing the tiara, and let's close this out. And my and this is what they look like. And yeah, this is the image that they come back to. What am I seeing here? You know what? Let me put this here because I'm seeing, I'm seeing something. I know that this is a head here, but I'm getting, you know, it's amazing because now that I'm giving it to you here in this dimension and I got this, this here, I can look back up on my computer screen here, my laptop, my view cam, uh, my, my, uh, my view cam here, and I can see a whole nother complete, another image. Oh, okay, I know what I'm seeing. Oh, oh, I was wondering what I was seeing. Okay, I can see it now. I see what I'm seeing. Because not only am I seeing the Pope's face here, 
I'm seeing dimensional other faces on top of faces coming up into his tiara. That's what I'm seeing. Backwards, but I'm seeing it and off my... I'm looking at it not here as you're seeing it here, but I'm looking back on it in another sense. Now, this is something else that you got to realize when you're looking at these, these, these images, people. They're dimensional. They're made to project images from the past and the future and send into the future. They're dimensional holographic images, messaging boards created through these structures. Now, something else about this that which is amazing people is the fact that these images when you project them one way now already now just think about it now this is a dimension this is like 3d this is something that was changed one piece laid over another now check this out this is the dimensions that i'm looking at this through and i'm bringing it to you now we had that dimension open up where there was a picture taken of anchor Wat of a building then that picture was placed online that's another dimension then you have now that's two dimensions then you have that picture downloaded and altered and overlaid so you went through about two to three different more dimensions so that's about five dimensions and then now I'm opening up another dimension I'm putting it up on a large 40 I think it's 46 or 47 inch screen I'm putting it up there so that's like six dimensions and then I'm playing it to you and bringing it to you and recording it onto my um, laptop, which is like about, we're at eight dimensions now. Do you get the picture, people? So through each dimension, another image is shown to you. And through each of these dimensions, another creature is revealed and another story is being told. And this is what this is all about. And this is why you can see amazing things like this. I'm going to go back to the Egyptian glyphs. And I'm going to show you something else. Again, this is, this is Nefertiti. And again, thanks to, um, to Mike. Mike has been producing these images for me. He doesn't know what they mean. But he just knows that he can make some cool images through that of utilizing his um his phone app and just twist these around and he brags about how he can be driving down the road and can make these images off the i think he said pick quicks or something his phone app and he just takes some and overlays one image on another and just keeps playing with it just moving the image around one over top of another and these images keep appearing for him he sends them to me for um, um for decoding purposes and my understanding Again, look at Nefertiti. Opens up her side, fold, oh, fold it open. Her legs come open. And you even see a ladder like going up into her vagina area. And again, there's faces here off to either side that you can see. And again, these dimens dimensional message boards, which can be read. these creatures that created these glyphs like that at Angkor Wat and the other buildings they enter at some point or another they interacted with the creatures that calls for their existence and through each um, passing down of this information and of this knowledge they incorporate it into their art and the projection of their images who they genetically were and how you can genetically identify with your ancestry so these images at this point had a technology behind them that even though this was in back I mean I don't know when they when was the date on these things it doesn't make even make a difference the fact that I don't even know if they even had the true date on it because they don't know when the pyramids were made or anything or so they say anyway but the bottom line is that this is why you can find these multidimensional images in the artworks of Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Bernini, um, Rembrandt. Um, I mean, these artists knew. And then even in the surreal art with Salvador Dali and the others, I mean, um, 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 there's George Quintence. 
I mean, these artists knew they had this hidden knowledge. Now, it's not just the artists. These world-renowned art schools have this information. Because the artists that, that they evolved out of these art schools did so with the knowledge and the understanding that they knew how to create these images or similar images to this. Most of our world's most treasured art today have this in there. Globally, people. Not just in America. Everywhere. Rome, Germany, Russia, China, Japan. Everybody has this hidden knowledge. Now, you have a reptilian woman cloaked with Nefertiti. And this is the cloak that she's wearing. So when the image is moved around, it shows the reptilian woman with her legs open and she's pregnant. And her reptilian arms are crossed over her belly. You see that? And this is her bosom chest area. And it's shown that through the body of Nefertiti and this reptilian came Nefertiti and it then shows the babies and it's showing the bridging over process. People, I mean, it doesn't get no better than that. And you look here, there's a story to be understood here. Look, there's no, there's no denying what is there. You see a reptile with its legs open up with a pregnant belly and with the arms folded over like you see pregnant women do today. Imagine them having this knowledge back then. A continuation process of genetic bridging. How many minutes have I been into this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your exit out of this. I'm going to do another image. Right quick, I think I have it. And then and again, look, here's another. Look at this. With a lion's face. Consistent with that of the great sphinx. And then here's a lion's face. And then another thing that is troubling about all of this is, you know what, people? And here you can see the face of an owl. Right there. Okay. And the owl, what? Almost like a um, a crown, um, wearing a crown there, and it's showing you, and this even creates the feathering of the owl, or the nesting of that. You see that right there, people? Now, this is all with that image of Nefertiti. And then they are knocking babies. Look at that, people. Dimensional images opened up within, on that Egyptian glyph, of the Anakin babies with Anakin and Nefertiti and their children. Look at what you get. I'm going to leave for you to look at that for one minute. And I'm going to put some water on for my coffee. And I'm going to take and um, I'm going to close this video out. How many minutes are we into this? 52 minutes. I'm going to let you look at that for a minute, people. And let y'all digest that while I put some water on for my coffee. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to end this video, people. Again, you're watching another video. Okay. And um, again, thanks a lot, Mike, for helping me with this and, and bringing these images to me because it actually lends to helping um, me um, support my position on what is happening here. And again, people, you can take these images, these multidimensional images. You can turn them and flip them. And for the most point, there will be another image created because you know why? This is the way that reptiles, this, this is how you, through the eyes of reptiles, these things were being seen. That's who we are. We are everything that you are seeing here. We are that. So imagine what type of eyesight that um, not only did the reptiles have, but imagine what the eyesight of what a lion would have or what an owl would have. All of these creatures were some, in some form or some shape or another in some time. The genetics of these creatures were 
introduced to that of mankind to genetically alter themselves. So imagine having all of these genes, these genetics, which has been introduced, extracted, introduced, extracted. The information is though still in the DNA and all of this is in us today and which is caused for all of these genetic strains that we got. What do they say we have? Like 180 or 200 something different um, un unidentified strands of, of genetics that we have and most of them we don't need. People, do you understand where we're going with this now? Do you understand? See, because everything all of a something makes sense. People, there are people around you every day that work, your colleagues that work with you, that may have this information, but do not share it with you. Those long hours you pull in at your, on your desk, trying to understand, you're pouring your heart and your soul, your entire life, and I'm talking to, to, to science or anybody that's studying artwork or anything in your profession. You're dedicating your entire life to understand this. And there are people right beside you that know, looking over your shoulder. And every time you, they think you might be getting close and they look at you and say, oh, that ain't nothing. How about doctors that are studying for medicines? And trying to understand DNA strands and what is going on with the, 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 the genetic identifiers with our bodies. And you take it to your colleague or to your supervisor and you say, um, and the next step in command, and say, look, I found something that shows that there is something dealing with reptile and, 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 and mankind's DNA. And they look at you and say, oh, that ain't nothing. People have dedicated their entire lives wholeheartedly to try to understand this and there has always been somebody there in the in the, in, in, in the shadows to discourage them from going any further but yet they knew the truth people valued artwork art is all about this globally look at their schools look at the where these people came look at movies all of this stuff is designed to get into your head to, to implant these subliminal messages regarding who you are. It's, and it's all about, it, it, it has a more darker scenario than you could ever imagine. But as we start to go international or we start to go viral with this information, I can reveal more and more as we go along. But people, when I tell you that this has no end, it has no end. But when I also tell you that it has many more possibilities of who we are and where we can go and what we can genetically do with ourselves, people, trust me, the sky is the limit. Through your help, through your views, through your sharing of my videos, we can do this together. We can take this thing. And it's, I mean, it's, it's the cancerous effects of this are scarred deep within us. But you do not have to accept what has been taught to you now. If it, you know, I was always told that if it is false in one, then it is false in all. If it's false in all, then you, it's unreliable. You cannot take the information which has been given to you and use it as being factual and truth when it is not. People, I cannot continue to do this if it wasn't. I have no end to the materials that I can put up here on the screen at every given day to show you. My name is Jerome Wright, and I'm going to end this video here. Thank you for viewing, and again, please, please share, and also join me on my alien UFO site. Thank you. It creates the scenarios to show you everything that these people were trying to suggest and what they did on those locations. Um, and, I'm, and I'm telling you that it all goes back to... Um, our ancestors whom you know nothing meant more to them than who they genetically were and how they could genetically evolved from that of what they currently were and this is what is going on today behind the scenes and this is why I'm telling you like what ancient rooted royalty and ancient rooted um, religion that the same thing is actually happening today because the evidence is right here with what our ancient ancestors were doing. 
And a lot of these locations here, you have to realize that they went on. They actually, they explored. Explorations went on. And they were, um, I'm going to bring up the Anakin babies. And um, these explorations, there you go. These explorations were actually done on these locations because they knew what they were looking for. You know what I mean? They had heads up. And you have to talk about these exploration goes back to, I mean, God knows when. I mean, they said, like to say that Christopher Columbus was the first. But there's evidence of others being there before that. Um, the suggestion of the 15, um, I think it's 15, 17 Piri Rice maps, which show glaciers that were not there but should be there, and um, um, incomplete maps. All of these different scenarios, but yet, you know, the best people that are in position to tell us and enlighten us on the truth, they have failed to do so thus far. Um, I mean, an ancient rooted religion and ancient rooted royalty. Look at the information and coming around, wrapping around Nefertiti's head, and then shown coming out, and then it shows you a head of a snake here. So there's a connection. Am I still on Nefertiti's head? There? Yeah, okay. There's a connection with all of this. And if you look in the face closely, you could actually see it. Now, the Medusa like woman has always been in our ancient history. Yep. And this is what this is a woman there with, with snakes all in her hair. You see that there? And this is exactly what this woman over here in Nefertiti's ear looks like. And if you Google ancient ancient Swedish stones, all throughout our ancient history, the Medusa like woman with snakes on her head is shown. It's a reference of this woman that is shown. This image is all everywhere, globally. Now, I mean, I know what it all means, and for me to go into detail about it right here now, it's just not, I mean, it's not just the purpose of this video, so I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay focused on the video here, because you can go off in a bunch of many directions, because there is no end to this, people, of, as to what is happening. Now, I'm going to come over to um, um, Anakin here, and I'm going to show you how there's his head. And, you know, you're going to have to find that, that it is very strange that his mouth is up to the, um, the child's mouth, okay, which is a symbolization of an exchange of genetics. One would think kissing and this, that, the third. I mean, this is how these people describe um, genetics. I mean, we all know that the malfunctions that are were at the disposal of these people, through not just through inquis um, inquisitions, but just through the explorations that they commissioned, um, artwork that they were exposed to, glyphs that they were exposed to, and you know, and in the wake of all of these explorations that were commissioned by um, ancient rooted royalty and ancient rooted religion, there was defacing. And, and desecration of these locations that they visited. So they took all of the information, the gold, um, the information, the, the, wiped these people out, literally just wiped their identity off the face of the earth, and then leave the rest of the world later on in time, which is now, guessing as to what is going on when they had the knowledge all along. And this is what the problem is that I have with that. But anyway, I'm going to go to this Anakin babies here and as you see this here okay this here is the way that we would actually view the image like right here okay this is what if you would get if you google the image and and there's a little subsection here that's actually well not subsection but a section that's broken out here okay now this is what you'll see now i already have a video on this and in my video I show us that right here, that in Nefertiti's throat area, there's an, an ape right there, okay? I'm seeing the eye there, the cheekbone, there's the ape's mouth right there, here's the ape's bottom chin area, okay? And the child body, which is here, I'm showing that there's a head created in the body, there's an eye. There's a mouth, okay, and it creates a reptile-like reptile creature because 
The skin of this creature can be realized within the cloak of Nefertiti's body, the, the clothing that she's wearing. That's why this looks like that. So you have two heads. You have an ape and this reptile, and a child is shown bridged between the both of them right there. Okay, so you have two heads, the reptilian-like head here, shown in the reptilian body. That's why this side of her um, her cloak she's wearing is that of like a reptilian. And then the ape here, and then it's showing Nefertiti. Now the child has his hand out, extended with his hand open. And right there too, and well, if you look in Nefertiti's ear right there, there's a face of a witch-like woman whom I dub as the mother of creation. And the child had his hands out to one of those snakes coming off of her head, which is, it's, this, this face is cloaked in the ear. No one will never know that that was there unless I actually described it. Now, I want to bring it in closer to show you. Let me bring that. Okay. Do we still have Nefertiti's ear there? A little, I guess I can, I can go over some here. Now, Nefertiti's ear there's the there's the face there okay there's the chin there's the mouth there's the nose there's an eye and you see there's a snake coming off the bottom here right there and the child had his hands out stating that there's a bridging okay and then here again there's another snake like object going here and it's shown snaking all the way up and weaving up look everybody jerome right here once again and um Again, you're joining me here on my Jerome Wright YouTube channel, here on YouTube. And um, in this video, I'm going to be um, discussing a little bit about um, the Egyptian, um, the, uh, the, um, the glyphs regarding Nefertiti and Ananakin and their babies. And also Angkor Wat, there's a building there at Angkor Wat. And these are regarding... Um, mirrored images. This is my mail inbox here that you're actually looking at. In fact, let me cover recipients, names of recipients up over here when I'm thinking about it, just in case I actually catch that by mistake. So let me cover that over. Um, yeah, so what's what's happening here is that, um, okay, that should be good. Um, what's happening here is these are mirrored images. And in the mirrored images, um, they create images like multi. It's a, like a multi-dimensional um, holographic image that are created, and I like to call it like a holographic time machine because these images produce other images, and it shows you everything that existed previously, and in a sense futuristically and these holographic images are dimensional and they go both ways and it's my position that these images um, when they are one image laid over another or folded over another like a book um, what happens is that it